Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of Video Analytics 101. Today we're talking about face recognition, a very hot but also very controversial topic. And today we're going to look at how it actually works. So let's get right to it. Facial recognition has been around for many years, but in recent years, it has been increasingly popular. We use it every day on our phones, when we go through passport control, for access control, for many other things. Uh, but it's uh, very interesting and very important to understand how it works in the background, because there are many ways where facial recognition is maybe not the right choice. So in order to better understand it, here is a quick overview. So when we do face recognition, we essentially perform four different steps. And these steps are detection, normalization, feature extraction, and matching. And it's good to understand the distinction between those four because sometimes they are being confused. And by understanding it better, we can also make better choices when we deploy. So let's go through each and, each and every one of those. First, detection. So detection is what your camera does when, for example, it focuses on a specific face that you, that, that you try to make a picture of. Essentially, it's trying to find in an image where are the faces, where are the regions of interest that we're looking at. It's just checking where is a face in the image. And once we have this face, face we can go on to the next step, which is called normalization. Normalization is essentially where we take this face that we detected and we try to make it uh, put it into a common format that makes it compar comparable with other faces. So just imagine some faces are of people that are very close to the camera, some of, of people that are very far from the camera, so the resolution will be very, very different. Some cameras might have a certain um, color shade, some, some cameras might not have that, some cam cameras might be grayscale. So what we're doing is we're converting this face into a common format. One of the things that is usually done is converting it to grayscale. So we are not being distracted by different color schemes and different cameras. But what we are also doing is we're changing the aspect ratio, for example, and we're putting it into, into a very um, standardized and common resolution that we use through all of the faces. So no matter if we take the face from the back or the front of the image, it will all have the same resolution. And typically in our deep learning models, it's actually not a rectangle, but a square that we convert it to. So it might be distorted a little bit as well. So this is normalization. With normalization, we're ready to go to go to the actual task of feature extraction. And feature extraction is that this part that we usually talk about when people talk about how face recognition works, uh, because we're trying to find points in the face that are describing this face best. Traditionally, we have been um, talking about that face recognition measures the distance between the eyes, the distance between the, the nose and the mouth, for example. Nowadays, it's not so easy to define anymore because we use deep learning models that are kind of a black box and figure out by themselves what points in the image actually describe this person best. We can assume that it's still very similar. It will take the eyes for sure. It will take the nose, it will take the mouth, but it's not so clear anymore that we really can say we're measuring any exact distances. So we're taking um, these features, we're extracting them, and essentially we're converting points in the image into numbers, into a string of numbers that we see here and that we call a feature vector. So a feature vector is really the, the, the row of numbers that describes a specific face, actually the specific face in this specific image. You could say it's basically it's kind of an ID of the, of the face. And using this string of numbers allows us to compare it to other strings of numbers, so to other faces. So this is very important. It's a very important step, this feature extraction. And that leads us to the final step, which is called matching, where we take this number and compare it to all the other numbers that we want to compare it to and match it to. So we'll take this string and we compare it to our database. And this database might be a million, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, even billions of faces that we compare it to. So those are a lot of comparisons. And this really depends on your specific use case. And you won't find in the database this specific string of numbers because this specific string is only from your specific image that you just took. If the same person is on another image, the lighting will be a little bit different, resolution will be a little bit different, the person might be smiling or not smiling. So you're not looking for an exact match, but you're looking for the closest match. So essentially you're calculating the distance between these numbers. 
and you're trying to find another number in the database that's closest enough to your current feature vector that you could say, okay, it's close enough that this is the same person. So this is the whole pipeline, what you do and when you do face recognition. One important distinction as well is there are two different types of face recognition. There is verification and identification. And in practice, they might look similar, but from a technical point of view, they are very, very different from a complexity perspective. Verification is a comparison of one to one. So a good example is uh, passport control. You do, go there, you put in your passport, and what the system is doing is it, it takes the image of your passport and it compares this image of, with the image of the person in front of the camera. So essentially what it has to do is it has to verify that the person in front of the camera is the same person as in the passport. It's a one-to-one -one comparison. This works fairly well, and we see that all the time at airports. And it's the same thing that your phone is doing when you unlock the phone with your, with your face because your phone knows who to expect, your phone knows who you are, and it just checks that it's the same person in front of the camera. So it's a one-to-one -one comparison. Identification is vastly different because it's a one-to-many comparison. So a very typical use case for this is, for example, if we would have face recognition at Times Square, and there are 100 people there, and we want to find out if any of those people are in our database, we have to take each and every one of these people and compare to our database. So let's say the database is a million people. So we have to make a million comparisons times 100 for each person in the image. So that's 100 million comparisons each second in our video and a million in the database is actually a small number. So compare that with just verification, which is one comparison to 100 million comparisons. And that's the reason why verification is a much more mature technology. This is also the same that we use for access control versus identification, which is not being deployed in the wild so much and which is improving all the time, but which still has a, a way to go. And we have to look carefully where we deployed and where not. One final thought for face recognition, bias is an issue with all machine learning applications, but with face recognition, it's especially harmful. Bias means that we have a certain bias in our data set. And you, for many applications, that's not a big issue, but for face recognition, it has dire consequences if you discriminate based on uh, race, based on gender, based on age, based on hair color, based on eye color, whatever. So it's even more important that we reduce bias for face recognition. And we're gonna have a separate video that talks about bias. So that's it, folks. That's face recognition explained for you in a few minutes. If you have any comments, leave them here. Don't forget to subscribe and otherwise, See you next time.